Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the powers of governor as an important topic from Indian politics Excel. So powers of governor, you know, uh, that is being vested with governor through Article 154. The executive power of the state shall be vested in the governor. Now, who will exercise it? It shall be exercised by the governor either directly or through officers subordinate to him. The functions that is already conferred by some existing law on some authority, it will not be transferred on the governor. Then nothing in this article shall prevent parliament or the legislature of the state from conferring by law functions on any authority subordinate to the governor. Now, this is about Article 154 and powers, but we are going to discuss a detailed overview on governor, its powers, functions, and some recent criticisms and some reports. You know, part six, when we talk about the governor, so obviously we have to first come to the part six because part six of the Constitution of India deals with the state executive. You know, these are the executives, right? So, these part six are dealing with the state executives. The state executive, Manekun, the state executives consist of the governor, chief minister, council of ministers, and the advocate general of the state. They are the executive, the governor, CM, council of ministers, and the advocate general. <clears throat> now, if we talk about the nominal head, who is the nominal head? Nominal, see, we are using the term nominal. Right. So nominal head will be available. If we talk about the nominal head, then governor is the nominal head at the state level. Although we know that a CM used to be the means many, not many, just all, all almost all cases, you will see that CM is taking the head role. But actually, governor is the nominal head. Now, let's again come back to the constitutional provisions related to the governor. One article you have already seen, Article 154, related to power vested with governor. Now, 150T, Article 150T says that there shall be a governor for each state. One person can be appointed as governor for two or more states also, like in our Assam. Okay, that I means other uh, notices than many cases, uh, means not just Assam, I means um, in many cases, if it is needed, then governor may be appointed for two or more states. Means one governor uh, may be appointed for two or more states also. Now, this is under Article 150, which actually deals with that there will be an executive who is known as governor for each state. Now, this governor is appointed by the president and is a nominee of the central government. Okay, so who appoints the governor? President appoints the governor. Now he is also a nominee of the central government. Now it is stated that governor has a dual rule. He is the constitutional head of the state, bound by the advice of his council of ministers. That's why we are calling him as nominal head. He also functions as a vital link between the union government and the state government. Means the governor acts as a link between union and state governments. Now, Article 157 and 158 specify eligibility requirements for the post of a governor. Means who will, what will be the eligibility of governor, who can be the governor? First of all, he should be a citizen of India, at least of 35 years of age, at least. Okay. Then not be a member of either of the House of the Parliament or state legislature, not hold any office of process. This may be asked that whether he can be a member of parliament. No, he cannot be a member of either house of the parliament or house of the state legislature. Okay. And will not hold any office of profit. Again, the power of granting pardons. Governor has that power through article 161. <clears throat> There is a council of ministers, the CM at the head to aid and advise the governor in the exercise of his functions, except some conditions for discretion. And this is under Article 160 T. So this may be asked that which article gives the governor the power grant to pardons, Article 161. And which under which article governor can be assisted by the means can we can take advice from the COM? Then that is Article 160 T. 
Now, governor appoints the chief minister and other minister, and that is under Article 164. So you have seen these are the constitutional provision and one more important article that is in current news, that is Article 200. What is this? According to Article 200, the governor assents, withholds assent, or reserves the bill for the consideration of precedents passed by the legislative assembly. That is under Article 200, right? Means if governor, government, uh, governor wants, then he can reserve the bill also. Reserve the bills mean that the bills uh, under um, parliament, right? So that may again uh, imply some kind of delay and that is why the current day's news uh, means governor is in news because in many states it is found that governor means you either you can say willingly or we, we cannot say such type of word, but the bill is being reserved. The, he is not giving assent. So unnecessary delays occurring as per the uh, complaints of those uh, state governments. So that this, this uh, with this, the Article 200 is in use. Now, governors may promulgate the ordinances under certain circumstances also. So, governor has that power of promulgating ordinance and which is under Article 213. Okay. Now, some kind of immunity powers given to the position of governor. And what are they? He enjoys personal immunity from legal liability for his official acts. During his time of office, he is immune from any criminal proceedings, even in respects of his personal acts. He cannot be arrested or imprisoned. Yes, you um, listen right. You heard it right. Because he, uh, governor has that immunity power that he cannot be arrested or imprisoned. However, after giving two months of notice, civil proceedings can be instituted against him during his time of office in respect of his personal acts. So civil proceedings can be instituted, but only after giving two months notice. But he is immune from any criminal proceedings. So you should know the difference between criminal proceedings and civil proceedings. Civil proceedings is possible, but only after two months notice. Uh, but criminal proceeding is not possible. It means the uh, governor is immune from criminal proceedings. That the oath of the office to the governor is administered by the chief justice of the concerned high court. Just mark this point. This is very important as per Philip's point of view. The oath of governor office is admin administered by who? From chief justice of that particular state high court. Now, terms of governor office, he holds the office for a term of five years. However, his term is subjected to the pleasure of the president. Okay. The constitution has not laid down any grounds for the removal of the governor by the president. A governor can also hold office beyond his term until his successor assumes his charge. So you should first remember that the governor is the term is directly subjected to the pleasure of the president. Okay, and sometimes it is being criticized that governor actually works, uh, means on the advice of the central government or what uh, is kind of bias, right? So because uh, this type of criticism you usually see, uh, notice in the newspapers, and it happens also, because you have seen that the, he is subjected to the pleasure of the president, and also there is no any uh, means kind of constitutional constitutional provision or you can say any ground for the removal of the governor is given in the <clears throat> uh, constitutions. So it's totally on the president, right? So constitution has not laid any grounds for the removal of the governor by the president. You just mark this point. This may be asked in the prelims, right? A governor can hold office beyond his time also until the successor assumes the stars. The constitutional provision, position of the governor differs from the president in which ways. But the governor he, then uh, he has the some he has some constitutional position, right? Obviously, he has the constitutional powers, but how it differs from the president. First, while the constitution envisages the possibility of the governor, Article 163, acting at times in this discretion, no such possibility has been envisaged for the president. So he is a discretion ka power hai. Discretion of power to ko diya se, governor diya se, 163 article or under. Right, 163 article me diya hua hai. 
Then after the forty second constitutional amendment act, ministerial advice was made binding on the president. Means has president has to go through those those ministerial advice, but no such provisions has been made with respect to governor. Means uh, up to now, means so far, no such provisions of binding the ministerial advices on governor is being met. Right, governor may or may not follow such type of ministerial advices. Be these two ways. The governor position is different from the or differs from the president's position. Now, governor has constitutional discussion you have just seen. In which cases? He can dissolve the legislative assembly if the chief minister advises him to do following a vote of no confidence. Following which, it is up to the governor what he or she would like to do. So it, this power has been given to him. Then he can recommend the president about the failure of the constitutional machinery in the state. In that way, state emergency or state, um, you can say, president rule can be brought to that state, state, right? If he, the governor, thinks that the constitutional machinery failure is happening in his or her state, then he can also reserve a bill passed by the state legislature for president's assent, right? This is very much um, important because it is in current news, Article 200, right? Can appoint anybody as chief minister if there is no political party with a clear-cut majority in the assembly. This, this is again a power of discretion. He, he or she determines the amount payable by the government of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. This, you know, six little seats to an autonomous tribal district council as royalty Accuring from the licenses of mineral exploration. In my in one of my lectures between fifth schedule and sixth schedule differences, I have talked about this. We discussed about this, right? Then he can seek information from the chief minister with regard to the administrative and legal matters of the state. Then he can also refuse to sign an ordinary bill passed by the state legislature. So these are the constitutional descriptions of governor. Now, governor's power with respect to bill, you have already seen Article 200, right? He can, he may give assent or he may withhold the assent or reject the bill in which case the bill fails to become a law or may return the bill, bill for reconsideration of the state legislature or may reserve the bill for the consideration of the president. Now, now because of these, uh, this uh, means uh, a kind of controversy is going on, this matter of discussion, right? As held by the Supreme Court in various cases, including Shamsir Singh case 1974, the governor does not exercise these discretionary powers while withholding assent or returning a bill to the state legislature. They are required to act as part of the advice of the Council of Minister. The case of withholding case assent, in the situation of withholding assent may arise in case of a private member's bill. Any member of state legislature other than a minister, you know about the private member, right? passed by the state legislature, which the Council of Ministers do not want to be enacted into a law. And in such an instant, they would advise the governor to withhold assent. So this is related to the private members only. Now, the Council of Ministers uh, no, it, uh, <coughs> who enjoys a majority in the state legis legislative assembly would not allow the passage of such a bill. They may, this may happen, right? Also, if the incumbent government First bill has been passed by the legislature, falls or resigns before it is assented by the Duda by governor. The new council may advise the governor to withhold the assent. And Article 163 says that the governor will normally be aided and advised by the council of ministers, except in those functions which require his discretion. So, this matter of discretion is in news. What attempts have been made to address the concerns about the elite? partisan role played by the governors. My question is, governor ki hoi, both khetat, tomar central government or hokke kaam kore. Means, it is being um, criticized many times that governor works as part as end of the central government, government, right? But he should not do like that. He should be independent, right? So, changes regarding the selection of governors should happen. The National Commission to review the working of the constitution appointed by the Atal Bihari Baspay government in 2000 suggested that the governor of the state should be appointed by the president after consultation with the chief minister of that, that state. Then proposal by Sarkaria Commission 
which was set up in 1983 to look into the center state relation ami janu je sarkariya commission iska matlab kya hota hai sarkariya commission jab bhi dimag mein aata hai to kya aata hai center state relations ke upar right proposed that the vice president of india and speaker of lok sabha should be consulted by the prime minister in the selection of the governor so sarkariya commission kya bolte hai ke jo vice president hai aur speaker hai unko consult karna zaruri hai jab aap governor ko select karne ja rahe ho बल्कि नेशनल ये जो से पहले हमने क्या देखा हमने देखा कि जो नेशनल कमीशन है वो बोला है कि चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ द स्टेट को कंसल्ट करना चाहिए राइट देन पुंसी कमीशन सरकारी कमीशन के बाद सरकारी कमीशन याद रखना ये था 1983 नाउ तार पासो ताहिल पुंसी कमिटी प्रपोजल एंड द जस्टिस मदन मोहन पुंसी कमिटी कंस्टिट्यूटेड इन 2007 ऑन सेंट्रल स्टेट रिलेशन प्रपोज इट प्रपोज दैट a committee comprising the prime minister home minister vice president speaker and concerned chief minister should choose the governor so punchi committee bhi hai aapka center state relation ke upar 2007 mein aaya matlab bahut baad mein to wo kya bolte hai ke jo committee hona chahiye usme kon kon hona chahiye prime minister home minister vice president speaker aur state ka chief minister jo milke ek committee banayenge taki ye committee ka decision ke through governor ko select kiya jaye ye hai aapka punchi committee it also recommended deleting the doctrine of pleasure from the constitution but back the right of the governor to sanction the prosecution of ministers against the advice of the state governor government so doctrine of pleasure humne dekha that it works on the pleasure of president ye sab hatane ke liye baat ki hai punchi committee ne it also argued for a provision for impeachment of the governor by the state legislature kyunki aisa koi impeachment constitutional provision nahi hai to aisa bola gaya hai ki a provision hona chahiye impeachment impeachment ka kiska governor governor ko hatane ka ek impeachment procedure hona chahiye jo state legislature state legislature ke dwara ho right state legislature dwara ki hobo pare governor ko otorwar byabostha eta provision kori bola gaye so eya kune koisil this is by punchi committee of 2007 now what we can say as way forward while governors may defer with the contents of a bill and may exercise the available constitutional option they should not use their power to stall stall the legislation unpalatable to them right to so, tao look governors ko apna jo constitutional options hai usko thoda देख के मतलब अननेसेसरी डिले ना हो ये सब चीज देख के ही यूज करना चाहिए इट इज टाइम टू इम्प्लीमेंट द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द पुंसी एम एम पुंसी कमीशन पुंसी कमीशन अभी हमने देखा ना 2007 का कि हुई रिव्यू द सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशन एंड रिकमेंडेड गवर्नर शुड नॉट बी बार्डन विद द रोल ऑफ सेंसेलर्स द गवर्नर सीम टू हैव एन एग्जीक्यूटेड नोशन ऑफ देयर ओन रूल्स अंडर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दे आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू डिफेंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड मे यूज द पावर्स टू caution elected resigns against violating the constitution but this does not mean that they can use the absence of a time frame for decision making and the discretionary space given to them to function as a parallel power center to ye sahi hai ki governor ke paas jo power diya gaya hai usse wo kya kar sakta hai bill ko bill mein assign nahi de sakta to ki kis case mein aisa jab unko lage ki wo bill sahi nahi hai this is bill is violating some rules and regulations or some kind of vested interest is there in such cases also he, uh, he in such cases only he can uh, means take that discretionary powers conferred upon him. but unnecessary delay jo abhi ho raha hai ki bill ke baad bill jo so withhold karke rakha hai aisa nahi hona chahiye jo bill theek hai jo bill nahi ho sakta pass jo bill mein kuch garbar hai kuch matlab vested interest hai right political parties ka to usko aap withhold karo but unnecessary sare bill ko aap को डिले नहीं करना चाहिए आपको कोई एक सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का मतलब वेस्टेड इंटरेस्ट में भी काम नहीं करना चाहिए या तो कोई स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का वेस्टेड इंटरेस्ट में भी काम नहीं करना चाहिए यू शुड वर्क एज एन इंडिपेंडेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी एंड यू शुड आल्सो कंसर्ट टू द टाइम फ्रेम ऑफ डिसीजन मेकिंग राइट एंड प्रॉपर यूज ऑफ द डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पावर्स सो यही वे फॉरवर्ड है सो my dear uh, friends we have discussed about the powers of governor and all the constitutional provisions related to the governor is real uh, means its discretionary powers and some criticisms and some way forward associated with this so iske upar bhi if you want to I mean suggest something if you want to discuss something you can surely comment thank you